Well, as you all know, I'm not exactly the <laughs> youngest member of the narration community. But nonetheless, this story predates me by a decade or two, which makes it all the more fun. I had to get on a school bus in my teenage years, and it wasn't an experience I enjoyed particularly. However, it wasn't as nightmarish as the school bus in tonight's story. Sit back and relax with your favourite drink, my dear, dear friends. Because it's time to listen. In 1975, my best friend disappeared. I'm going to tell you what happened. It won't take long, because the story is a short one. But that's a necessity of the facts. Quite simply, there aren't many. Here they are. His name was James Wade. He was 13 years old. One night he went to bed, and the next morning... He wasn't there. The front door was open, and James was gone. The house, as far as anyone could tell, hadn't been broken into, and there were no signs of a disturbance. James wasn't a troubled child, and his parents were decent, loving, and hard-working. They all lived together in a nice middle-class neighborhood in the suburbs. No one ever saw him again. The police had no leads, no clues, and no suspects. The story pretty much starts and ends there. Pretty much, but not quite. James disappeared on a Wednesday night. I saw him in school earlier that day, and he told me that the previous night. Something had woken him up in the early hours of the morning. Exactly what, he couldn't say. It was late November, and when he'd gone to bed, the wind had been shrieking with a vengeance. But when he woke up, everything was deathly still. Maybe the sudden quiet woke him. Sleep is strange like that. Whatever it was... When he did wake, he woke with a crawling sense of dread, like he'd just surfaced from a nightmare, and, as he lay there with his heart pounding in his chest and the silence pounding in his ears, he heard something, faint at first, the low, heavy growl of a big diesel engine. Somewhere close, and getting closer. Then, as it approached his house, he heard a second noise. It took him a moment to realize it was a horn, beeping gently, like someone taking care not to wake the whole street, tapping out a friendly rhythm, a kind of toot-toot, toot-toot. But it was a horrible noise, James said, tortured and unnatural, like the honking of a dying goose. He crept to the window and looked outside. Crawling down the empty street, at the unhurried pace of an ice cream van, was an old school bus, a battered yellow GMC. One of those things that looks like a cross between a tractor and a horse box. It looked like it had been driven through a swamp. There were mud splatters radiating out from the rusted wheel arches and dead leaves rotting in the windscreen grill. The windows were streaked with grime. At least one of them was cracked. Some of the body panels had been replaced and the bodywork was a patchwork of yellow shades, adorned with black lettering that was peeling away. 
hanging off the sides of the bus like shreds of torn skin. James didn't switch on the bedroom light, and he didn't open the curtains. He just kind of peered through a crack between the drapes. But when he did, the bus rolled to a stop. It stood there for a few moments, idling in the center of the road. Then, its headlights flashed. By now, James's skin was crawling in terror. Seeing an old school bus on a quiet residential back street in the early hours of the morning was a strange sight. But it shouldn't have been one that inspired blind terror. Nonetheless, it did. James could sense that something was very very wrong. He dived back into bed and pulled the sheets over his head. He lay there for a while, with his heart beating, and sometime later, not long, maybe five minutes, he crept back to the window. The bus was outside his house. When he inched the curtains open, the horn went Beep, beep. A friendly beep. A, come on, it's time to go, beep. James went back to bed, and this time he stayed there. The horn honked a few more times. Then, a few minutes later, he heard the bus pull away. On Wednesday morning, when I saw him in school. James had black bags under blood-shot eyes. He claimed he hadn't slept a wink. He claimed he hadn't slept a wink. He was clearly distressed. I made a mistake, he kept telling me. I shouldn't have looked, he kept saying. It doesn't mean anything, I told him. It's just... A bus. But nothing I said seemed to reassure him. I shouldn't have looked. I shouldn't have looked, he kept saying. And that's where my story ends. James and I went our separate ways at the end of the school day, and I never saw him again. And that's it. No big reveal, no explanation, no twist, no climax, nothing. Unfortunately, life is like that, loose ends and unanswered questions. I'm in my fifties now. Sometimes I get nightmares. Sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're different. But even when they're different, they're just variations on a theme. Here's one. It's a late night. My car has blown a tire. I'm fixing it by the side of the road. I hear an engine. It gets closer and closer until I'm shielding my eyes from the glare of oncoming headlights. A school bus rolls by. As it passes me, I see a kid in the back window, banging the glass and screaming something that's lost in the roar of the GMC's huge diesel engine. It's James. He hasn't aged a day. I'm not a superstitious man, there's nothing in this story that can't be explained rationally. Maybe the bus had nothing to do with James's disappearance. Hell, maybe there was no bus. Maybe he dreamt the whole thing. Even so, I've got two children of my own, and when they were young, I told them an embellished version of this story. A story about an old school bus that cruises the streets at night. 
It moves very slowly, like a stalking cat, its horn honking gently. A siren song to curious children, and if any children get out of bed, go over to the window and look outside. The bus will roll to a stop. The next time they look out of the window, it will be parked outside their house. Soon after that, maybe even the same night, that child will disappear without a trace. I told them that sometimes you can see the bus during the day, but during the day it can't hurt you. During the day it just travels from town to town. Sometimes adults see it too. It can't hurt the adults. Or maybe it can. It just doesn't want to. Mostly, adults don't even notice it. But even when they do, they certainly don't notice anything strange about it. Because, although you can see through the windows, you can't see inside the bus. You can't see the children banging on the glass, crying and screaming, and wondering why the hell you're just standing there looking at them, and why the hell you don't do something. You can't see the children who gave up hope long ago and now just sit there staring into space or sobbing into their laps. The children never get old. The bus never stops. My children cried and wouldn't sleep for a week. My wife was livid. I didn't care. I'm not saying that what I told my children is true. It's a bastardized version of what James told me with the gaps filled in by my nightmares. Nevertheless, it seemed important to me that my children know that if ever they are lying in bed and if they ever hear the sound of an engine and a honking horn, they must ignore it. Failing that, they should run out of their rooms and come and climb into bed with me and their mother. Anything. Just don't go to the window. Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you. 